Hi, I'm the Rick and Rick Turns. Today, I'm going to show you how to make these little spindle washers. Now, this spindle washer goes over the headstock spindle, up against the housing, and uh, it will pretty much prevent the chuck or the faceplate from getting frozen in place to the housing around the spindle, which can happen if you don't have anything there. Now, these are really cheap. I got this one for free. It came with my lathe. Uh, hey, that was worth the cost of the lathe right there. You can buy them for 3 to $5 uh, from uh, wood turning sites and things like that. These that I made uh, are pretty much free. Uh, some scraps of plastic around the house that I picked up, a uh, uh, drill bit and a hole saw, and you got it. Very easy to make. I'm going to show you how I do it. This is a spindle washer. It goes over the headstock spindle. And it's there to help prevent a freeze up between the chuck and the housing of the headstock spindle. This is one, uh, this is a commercial one. Okay, it's just a, as you can see, you've probably seen these before anyway. It's just a narrow ring of plastic. And it functions very well. Uh, using one of these, it's fairly rare for the headstock to really get stuck. Although it will happen sometimes. Now that, uh, piece there will, will cost you oh, three, five dollars uh, at one of the wood turning stores. Uh, it's not very expensive. It's a bit of a nuisance to get, but once you get three or four or five of them, depending on how often you lose them, well, then you're set for a long time. But you don't have to, to buy them, really. Uh, these things are really trivial to make. And that's what I'm going to do here, is just make some of these. I spent an hour or two fiddling around with uh, uh, jigs and methods of holding the work in place because it is a little bit tricky to to do this without chewing your fingers up on a drill bit or something But they're easy to make and that's what I'm going to show you It doesn't take a whole lot of materials I'm using scrap plastic pieces from around the house. This is a uh, an old plastic notebook that I've had sitting in my uh, office closet for several years Well, this is very thin and it's very tough and it makes a really good spindle washer. The other materials I use in this little project is a couple of scraps of wood, uh, basically that I cut holes in for the two sizes of holes that I'm going to be making, which is the size of my headstock spindle, one and a quarter inches in this case, and uh, the next uh, size above that for which I had a hole saw for, which is two inches. The other thing I'm going to be using is a scrap of sandpaper. And I'll, I use that just to hold things in place along with these two pieces. It doesn't take much in the way of tools. I'm going to be using a one and a quarter inch Forstner bit. That is the size of my headstock spindle, one and a quarter inches. So this gives me the inside hole of the washer. I'm going to be using a hole saw. This is a two inch hole saw. It happens to be the uh, general size for installing doorknobs. And that's where I got it from several years ago when I had to put in some doorknobs. My commercial spindle washer is one and three quarter inches in the outside diameter. Two inches is going to be fine. So, let's go over to the drill press. That's pretty much where all the work gets done. Not the drill press. First thing I'm going to do here is fasten a sacrificial uh, table block in place because I'm going to drill into it. So I want a clear space here and I'm just going to clamp that down. Alright, that's tight in place and it's not going to move. Got a couple of little jigs that I made just to help me uh, basically line things up. So this is for the inside hole, this is for the outside cut. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark off a piece of plastic that this will fit on. doesn't have to be a huge piece by any means, but enough to get a grip on when I try and hold it down to the table. I'm going to take a pair of scissors and just trim that off. This notebook was uh, very noble to give its life for the sake of wood turning. 
That's my first one. Okay, now, I want to uh, get the table in one position vertically and not move it after that. That's fairly important because I want to keep things aligned between a change of drill bits. For startup, I need to be able to drill this down into the sacrificial table here. And the same for the one and a quarter inch bit, which is the one I'll use initially. All right, that is my spindle hole bit. And I'm just going to drill a hole into the table. About an eighth of an inch or so, not a whole lot. So this is a two inch hole cutter. Like that. Now you see, I have not moved the table. Uh, we're still locked in place vertically as well. So this hole here is going to be concentric with this one. Back to the one and one quarter inch Forzner bit. Now actually if I had a hole saw, that would be better I think. The Forzner bit is going to attempt to uh, cut on the interior of the hole when actually all I want is to cut around the edge. Just checking the alignment. Cut around the edge would be better, but this works okay. All right, uh, ready to make the first cut for the spindle washer. I'm just going to place this on here so that the hole is roughly in the middle of it. Slide it underneath here. And I just want to get it lined up here. Yeah. The only real reason for having this little jig here is, is to hold some sandpaper down and to give me a really good grip on the plastic, because it's going to want to spin as soon as that drill hits it. Okay, there we have it. Once again, don't move the table. Don't move it up. Don't move it sideways. Mine, when you loosen it to move it up and down, it, the table will wiggle back and forth, and that's why I'm very careful about not uh, moving it vertically. So now I'm ready to cut the outer circle, which will leave a ring there, which will be the washer. So I'm going to use this little jig here for setting things up. And I'm going to use this uh, same piece of sandpaper. Now I'm going to put this in place first and position it on this. Okay, it's in the right place. Now on the interior here, I'm just going to move that washer material right over the hole that's in the table. Let me reset this because I moved it out of place. All right, that's good. Looks like it's it. Okay, ready to cut it. And let's see how that turned out. Pretty good, pretty good. Not perfect, it's a little wider on this side than it is on this side. But that doesn't really matter to that much uh, because there's enough room on both sides so that the chuck or the faceplate will not come into contact with the metal behind it, but still will, instead will rest on this. And so uh, generally will not get stuck or frozen in place. I've tried various materials. This piece of notebook cover has, has worked out pretty well. The actual best ones I've had, I think, were the uh, ones that I made from a old milk container. The milk jug there, the plastic of it, uh, cut very well and uh, was easiest to work with and it was translucent, which makes it a little easier to, to work with because you can see what you're doing a little bit better. So i got a bunch of them that I've made today. I think I've got enough there to last me for at least three weeks, maybe a month. So, 
you decide to make it, have fun. See you next video.